Welcome to another edition of Tag Management Tips. Uh, today we're going to get into performance and tags. We want to go through a little bit just how exactly your website's working um, and then also how tags are fitting into that. A lot of clients that we're working with now are starting to realize that the tags and any code that's uh, added additionally to the website is going to have an effect on how exactly that website is performing. And, and when we say performing, just speed. How quickly can your users access the information uh, that they're requesting when they're typing in and visiting your web page? So the general attitude towards tags, especially over the past few years, as the management piece has moved out of development and into a little bit more of the marketing side, um, has been uh, pretty cavalier or willy-nilly um, in that any new tag is thrown on there. Not much of a process for removal of old tags when they're no longer in use or when campaigns are over. And it's starting to have a pretty profound impact on user experience and in site performance in general. So I want to go through exactly how this works, why tags are a factor, and then what are some of those different things that you can optimize um, when it comes to the tags and really look for as you're trying to improve performance via improving your tag management. So when it comes to how your website's working um, and how those tags are working, there's really three main components here. The first is the client, which is the actual user's browser. So whatever it is that they're accessing your website with. Now the browser, so Google Chrome or Firefox or Safari, whatever they're using to access your website, what it is doing is it's playing a key role because it is reading through well, first, it's getting the code to your website from your site's server. It's then parsing through all of that code and requesting and then pulling down and, and getting back all of the content for your website. So all the text, all the formatting, all the styling, all the photos, all the videos. The browser is what's actually sending out and then pulling that down and then putting it together in order to be able to render or piece together and show to your user. So uh, the client's one aspect, um, in addition to handling all those things, it's also handling the tags. So any data collection um, and, and tags that are, are functioning on the website, client is, is handling all that. Second piece here is in the middle, your actual connection. So this would be your internet connection, uh, which people forget that the internet is a bunch of wires uh, that are, are connected. So a good visualization here is, is kind of the tube, right? So it is. Um, traffic or data and requests are being sent and then also sent back all within a tube. So there is a limited capacity uh, based upon connection speed and bandwidth, which we'll touch on here. Uh, but there is the, the connection that's connecting your device to uh, the internet at large and then is connecting um, to the actual platform's servers. So these servers uh, all over the place, this is what houses the actual information houses the functionality for your tags, houses the content potentially for your website, houses the advertising, all, all that stuff that you might be running um, and might be happening on your web page. So these three aspects fit together to really drive uh, performance. And we can optimize different pieces within each. So on the client side, some considerations to keep in mind as we're looking at the tags on the website. First. Uh, CPU is going to factor in on the client side. So what, what types of devices and, and what types of machines are your, your users using? Um, if there's something that can handle a lot of processing, they can handle more, I don't want to say more tags in general, but th they kind of can. So different sorts of processes and different sorts of codes that is requiring more of the machine, um, we're going to want to really think about what type of device is being used. Also, there are browser limitations when it comes to tags. Uh, one thing that you're really want to want to going to want to look at when it comes to performance is um, how many different connections are possible, and then what is the volume of the requests. Um, and when I say request tags are making requests and that they're sending and receiving information from their server, your website is also making requests. Those requests are going out for the content for um, those, any visualization, any photos, any videos. Uh, those are also requests. So browser limits 
as to how many requests can be made at one time. If a request is going out, trying to send information up for a tag, and yet there's content still not quite loaded on the site, that's directly affecting uh, that user experience because the user, user doesn't care about their information going up to a different platform or marketing tool. They care about being able to read whatever that uh, content on the website is. Second piece here with the connection, we're going to want to think about bandwidth. So what is the size? Uh, again, what type of device, uh, what type of internet connection do most of my users have? Uh, I have a limited, uh, a smaller limit to the amount of information that can be sent in and received if my user is on a 3G connection, for example, versus some great Wi-Fi somewhere. So as I consider what the bandwidth is and, and how much speed um, the, the user has available, I then need to start thinking about what are the size of the requests. If I have um, only you know, a couple hundred kilobytes of bandwidth to work with in order for my site to load in X amount of seconds, and a couple of my tags are taking up 50% of that, that's a gigantic weight and it's going to absolutely um, cause my site to perform a little bit more poorly. I also want to um, just take into account distance as well as connection. Um, and this comes in a little bit more when we're talking about the, on the server side. So on the actual tag end of things um, and, and what that looks like. So the main things on the server end or on the actual uh, tag end are going to be the latency. So when it sends up a request, in order for this to process that information and then send back a response saying, yep, got it, we're good. Um, how long does that take? And then also the location um, that's going to directly affect that latency. Because the further um, a request has to go, the longer it's going to take. It might only be milliseconds, but those milliseconds matter when we're talking about hundreds and thousands of total requests that it might be happening on your website. So when it comes to the tags, I want to be looking at uh, how many are there, how, what is the volume of requests being sent by each, what is the size of those requests, and then also what is the volume, or I'm sorry, what is the latency for those. All those factored together are going to help you start identifying what are the tags that are performing poorly and what are the tags that are causing my site to be, to be performing poorly. Hopefully this helps in optimization and we can improve some user experience and really improve uh, the overall functionality and effectiveness of our websites.